So this tutorial is on exploring mesh topology. Uh, uh, like that? OK. Is it OK? Yeah. It's on, right? Yeah. OK. OK, so uh, um, by, by exploring mesh topology, we mean um, answering questions like, given an edge in the mesh, what elements are adjacent to it? Given an element, what are the edges around it? What are its vertices? Or given a vertex, what are the elements connected to it? Okay, we can explore all of that using a few uh, fairly intuitive uh, methods or commands. Okay, let's let's start this time. Instead of the unit square, we have the unit cube. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is a unit cube has a, a few elements in it, nothing nothing serious. Okay, okay. Often we are faced with the task of iterating over mesh objects, iterating over mesh edges, for example, or mesh elements. And here are some facilities for that. Okay. Mesh dot vertices gives you a list of all vertices, so it's, it's, it's not re really a list. You can iterate over, over this object. You can, for example, print what's this object v. v. The object v has something called a point. And when you print this point, you see the coordinates of, the, uh, of that point. OK, so this mesh has, looks like it has eight vertices. And these are the coordinates of the point. Now you can ask, what is this type of this object V that, that appears inside the loop? And you see a type called mesh node emerge. OK. We can make an object of type mesh node by itself. And we'll do so in a second. But let me also mention that you can iterate over elements. If you have a task that you need to repeat over every element, then you say mesh.elements, and then you loop over o o over this iterator. Now, mesh dot the NGSOL keeps a list of volume elements and a list of boundary elements. The boundary elements are useful when you have uh, boundary conditions to, to impose. So you could, instead of this keyword, keyword vol, you could also put the keyword BND, and then you would be iterating over boundary elements. This is iterating over all these volume elements in here. Okay, so you see the printout tells you that you, what the vertices are and what the, what the vertices are for every element, L, L dot vertices, L dot edges gives you the edges of an element and so forth. Okay, so this uh, this object that we saw, um, a mesh node, we'll, we'll make one, one of these by first looking at something called a node ID. Node ID is a class inside uh, inside NGSolve that's a, sort of a standalone object. It doesn't have any mesh information. You make that object by just calling node ID and then and then and an enum object, which is one of these one of these things. Okay. It could be a vertex. It could be an edge. So you you could have an edge node, and you, you you can make the edge node by calling node ID edge, and then you give it a number, whatever is a number you like. Okay. So in this case, we're giving the number zero. This is this object doesn't know anything about the mesh, so it's it's n not very useful so far. But you can attach it to to a, to a mesh. And the way to do that is simply this: you take a mesh, and then attach your node by by the bracket operator. That creates another object. Okay, let's look at this object. This object is a mesh node object. Okay, from a node ID, we have now created a mesh node object which which has information from the mesh. So this was the point. Uh, this was the node number zero. Uh, what was it? This was the vertex number zero, and we see that this vertex number zero in this mesh has coordinate zero zero zero. And just to emphasize, the, the type of V and the type of mesh V are two different things, node ID and mesh node. And, you, and once you have a mesh node, you can ask things related to the mesh topology. For example, uh, you can ask this object of type mesh node to give you the edges connected to this vertex, 
and you can you can make a cell node ID, which would be an element, and ask it for all the faces associated to the cell. You can see that these are tetrahedral elements, so they, each of them have four faces associated to it, and these are the numbers of the four faces associated to the first tetrahedron. Okay. Uh, first, uh, we start from zero, so this is the second. <laughs> okay. uh, similarly, the similarly for faces and so forth. Now, just like you had uh, a node ID object and a, uh, which didn't have any mesh information and a mesh node object, you have something called an element ID and an analog of the mesh node object. So the element ID, just like you created in a node ID, gives you uh, an object, a standalone object, which, is, which doesn't have any information about the mesh. And you can attach it to a mesh, just like before, by giving it by, the, by this bracket operator. Right? And once it's attached to the mesh, you can query it for whatever mesh information you'd like. For example, vertices. OK, uh, one thing I've, I should point out here is that while creating this element ID object, I used the keyword B and D. That made it a boundary element. Uh, so this is the first of all the boundary elements. This is the first of all the boundary elements in the mesh, and you you see that from the number of vertices. It it only has three vertices, right? Uh, a tetrahedron should have four vertices. So this this way you recognize that this is actually an object on the boundary. It, it's a triangle with three vertices. So this mesh, although it, it looks like a volume mesh inside NGSolve, it uh, it has a collection of these. Boundary, fa boundary faces, which are triangles, in a list of boundary elements, as well as a list of volume elements. All right, so you can play around with this uh, node ID and element ID and so forth. There's one other concept, which is degree of freedom, degrees of freedom which is distinct from mesh nodes and, and element, element nodes and so forth. Because it, but degrees of freedom are associated to finite element spaces. What we discussed before, the mesh nodes and element nodes are just geometrical objects. You can associate degrees of freedom to mesh entities or geometrical quantities in the, in the mesh, like edges and faces. Uh, and, but that is the job of a finite element space. So let's pick up a finite element space, the, the same old Lagrange finite element space. and we can loop over mesh edges and ask an edge for all the finite element degrees of freedom associated to that edge. So we, we, we would ask that of the finite element space, not of the edge. So here, here, is, here is the edge, and the degrees of freedom in this case are, uh, are there are three degrees of freedom per edge. That's because the finite element space is four of four. Sort of makes sense if you have a Lagrange finite element space. Then on on a on a on a single edge, if you want to look at edge deg degrees of freedom, there, there there are three of them. Okay, there are degrees of freedom associated to edges, to vertices, uh, to faces. Now we're in three D and elements. You can build any of these objects and ask for the degrees of freedom associated to it. Right? What we just did was ask degrees of freedom of an edge. Now we can ask degrees of freedom of, uh, of, a, of a cell or, an, or a volume element. And you see there's a lot of it. Right? So because it's a high order element and, and you can count the number of degrees of freedom and verify that this is what should happen for the Lagrange element. Okay, uh, there w one, one minor comment in this tutorial. This, uh, before finishing up this tutorial, this FE space element, well, we haven't talked about it, but if you look at the help, the online help from the, from the doc strings, you will find that this FE space element is, is, is just derived from NGS element, which all we've already seen before. This is taking up an element ID and as, as attaching it to a, to a mesh vert vertex. So. All right, so those are the things we should know basic things we should know about exploring mesh topology. Questions?